how long are you using this laser power on this particular organ, for example? And the last is the wavelength. And now wavelength is nothing else as the color of the laser. And yeah, I have to bore you with the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, this little part that we have here in the middle is the visible spectrum. Starting here in the violet, going to the deep red. Apart from that, we have infrared parts. This means we have visible lasers, but we have invisible lasers. And um, the invisible lasers are the lasers that we're using, for example, for proctology. And I will tell you about the reason. Because the interaction of a laser beam with tissue basically is relying on four principles. And um, we all have heard of them, but just to, to memorize this again. We have a bulk tissue, and we have different processes of the laser photons, which are the laser lines, when they hit this tissue. Yeah? we can have the reflection of the surface. We can also have scattering, which means the photons of the laser transfer to space, they hit some tissue mass, and they are not reflected. They go into the tissue and they are deflected, but they are getting forward, they are getting deeper. Yeah? And this relies on the tissue size. Yeah? We all know that the body is consisting of uh, billions of cells, but when you go deeper, and of course we have smaller structures, cells might have 10 microns, which is one hundredth of, of a millimeter, but if we go to the mitochondria or even the membrane structures, we have different sizes. That means the laser beam is scattered in a different way. Sometimes it's back scattered, sometimes it's side scattered, sometimes it's forward scattered. Yeah? Um, the other and the parameter would be transmission. Yeah? You put laser power into a, a device and the laser goes through. So for example, if we would take a two millimeter thick layer of tissue or fat, then some of the laser light would go through the uh, fat tissue. And last but not least, and this is the most uh, interesting and important, is the absorption. Yeah? We have one part of energy going in, intensity going into some kind of, let's say, uh, medium, and on the other side, we have less energy, because some of the energy has been absorbed. And again, we have the same picture, and this sums up to the effect of the particular laser wavelength color on the tissue. So, what does it mean for the human body? The human body is basically consisting of um, water, and what you see here is that we're having different chromophores in the body. We have proteins, we have the lipids, we have the uh, melanin, we have the uh, uh, blood, oxygenated blood, deoxygenated blood, collagen structures, and also water. And here again we have the visible spectrum, which is here, from blue to red. And you can see here the graphs. And the main absorber in this infrared regime is water. And the graph that you can see here basically shows us several peaks, and this peaks are differing very strong depending on the change of the color of the laser. Now this means if we're using the wavelengths 1470, which we're using for example for fistula treatment, which is here, it's in one of the peaks. And the difference between, for example, 980 nanometer, which is the wavelength we use for the hemorrhoid treatment, and the wavelength 1470, both infrared, yeah, Looks, looks very small, but basically it is 65 times higher than this one, because this is a logarithmic scale. So you can see that we are trying to get into this maxima, to have a lot of control in the entry. What does it mean for your daily practice? We have different entry sizes. So if we, for example, consider the 980 nanometer, this might be going a little bit less than one centimeter in depth we use the laser for a long time. For 1470, it's just a fraction of this. And this is the reason why we're using 980 for some hemostatic reason or for, for, the, for the purpose of closing some vessels inside the sub, uh, um, mucosus area. And why we're using the 1470, for example, for the fistula tract. Um, and one thing is also important, we've been talking about the laser wavelengths, laser color. 
Um, it's always the curse that we do not want to carbonize. We do not want to put like a bacon in, in the frying pan and wait until it's black. We basically want to shape and only coagulate tissues because that means you are controlling what you're doing. So this is what, we're, one of, what we want to do. We want to have an irreversible change of the tissue. And then in most of these cases, the body sees that there is a uh, decayed uh, tissue and it's replacing the tissue. That's what we want to have. So, um, just to remind you of the differences between, for example, electrosurgery and the laser. The laser goes through space because as this red pointer, the laser travels through air and space, which means we do not have, materially have to have contact with the tissue, and the laser gives you a good control about the action in the tissue. For the electrosurgery, especially monopolar, you all know that the current is searching its ways. These devices are getting better, but basically you all know the cases when you are, for example, treating a fissure or working on a, a sphincter repair, and then the current is causing a lot of damage and it's hard to control this. With the laser and the special tools, you can refine your action. So basically, one part is the laser machine, the wavelengths, and the other part is the fiber that we're using. This is the reason why Biolitic has been putting a lot of work and effort into the shape of this fiber tip. Because um, it means you can shape the fiber tips towards the application. This is the reason why we're having a whole bunch of different fibers. For example, fibers for vaporization of the myoma polyps for the uh, prostate, we have ring-like fibers for the fistulas, we have sharp distal tips, we have ring-like two ring fibers for various vein treatments. So what does it mean when we're using the laser today? We have neurosurgery, we have ophthalmology, we have ENT, we have dental, dermatology, phlebology, so various things, gynecology, urology, the general surgery, and our issue from today is the proctology. And in proctology, we will be later hearing the expert. Just to give you a brief overview, we have two techniques for the hemorrhoid treatment. One is called LHP, where we are uh, hearing uh, Dr. Ryan later on. We have this so called health technique, which is rather ambulatory treatment of hemorrhoids. We have the fistula technique for anal fistula and also for sinus pedoli Here we can see the whole application range. Uh, but the laser is good for different things. Yeah? This is the other uh, the thing about the Leonardo laser that we're using. Because you can also do uh, spinal disc um, decompression yeah? by placing the laser tip inside the spinal disc mm -hmm. to shrink it. Um, but we also can use the same laser to destroy the facetor. <coughs> Elevation of the set joints to reduce the pain sensation of the patient. Or we have a very broad range in the ENT, ENO, so just to give you two examples, where we're having a whole bunch of different uh, application forms depending on the area where you want to treat. And here again, it's a wavelength which should, for example, do good hemostatics when you, for example, are treating on the tonsils. So, I would like to finish my talk by this nice little graph which says we should not make too much theory. Sometimes it's good to go and practice and, and that's, that's why I'd like to say thank you for your attention and uh, hope you have a pleasant day. Thank you.